Namo Adida Fa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our morning practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fourth mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful speech and the inability to listen to others, I vow to cultivate loving speech and deep listening in order to bring joy and happiness to others and relieve others of their suffering. Knowing that words can create happiness or suffering, I'm determined to speak truthfully with words that inspire self-confidence, joy, and hope. I will not spread news I do not know to be certain I will not criticize or condemn things of which I am not sure. I will refrain from uttering words that can cause division or discord, or that can cause the family or the community to break. I am determined to make all efforts to reconcile and resolve all conflicts, however small. Our Dharma lessons now are coming from Working with the Five Hindrances by Ajahn Tiradamo. This morning we're reading a section on causes. Underlying Dispositions The Buddha taught that lust for sensual pleasure is one of the underlying dispositions in Usaya, which even a young infant who does not even have sensual pleasure has within. When that quality has become steadfast and unsubdued, it becomes one of the fetters obstructing the realization of awakening. Thus, if we are not aware of this predisposition to desire for sensual pleasure and do not work on it, it will continue to be unconsciously active in our life, and very likely be the source of much distress and mental disturbance. Inappropriate attention. In one of the scriptures, the Buddha is quoted as saying that he does not see anything which causes the arising and increase of sensual desire so directly as inappropriate attention to the sign of the beautiful. Basically, this is giving excessive and unwise attention to attractive perceptions, which then dominate the mind, leading to the desire to enjoy them and hold on to them for further enjoyment. Reality is the way it is but we subjectively divide it into what is attractive and unattractive, with various gradations in between. As explained in the previous chapter, in the Buddha's analysis of the act of perception, feeling comes before perception. What we call attractive is thus what gives us pleasant feeling, and the unattractive is what produces unpleasant feeling. Most people prefer what is attractive or beautiful, that is, gives the most pleasant feeling, and we seek this out and give special attention to it. However, that is, in fact, a distortion of perception. Reality is not exclusively beautiful or pleasurable. There is beauty, but, sad to say, there is also much that is not beautiful, either downright ugly or just not attractive. It is one of the paradoxes of human life that, in the course of ego development, we subjectively distinguish what is pleasurable and attractive to us, and then we become obsessively attracted to it. One of the duties of self is to provide us with as much pleasant feeling as possible. If the self is not providing us with enough pleasant feeling, or is allowing too much unpleasant feeling to arise, it is failing in its primary duty, and we wish we had a more efficient self. Of course, in the end, this is fundamentally an existential issue. That is, if I wasn't getting at least some pleasure out of life, I wouldn't continue to live. If all your sights, sounds, smells, tastes, sensations, and thoughts were just miserable, would you want to continue living? I'd go and try somewhere else, exit this world and try for a better rebirth in some other place. So the reason why we are attracted to desire and grasp at pleasurable experiences is this old habit of self. 
it keeps seeking pleasant feelings and pleasurable experiences. Just on the visual level, most of us only want to see pleasingly beautiful, attractive things. You don't usually go around looking especially at dog excrement, smelly trash, or other ugly things. Usually, you look for the beautiful things. You walk around the world wanting to see beautiful sights and attractive things. This is a nature of our sense of self. We should know that our desire for sensual pleasure from attractive things is fundamentally a desire for pleasurable feeling tone. Maybe there is a better way to achieve this. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me today.